So firstly, a big thank you for letting us um, screen the film for its London premiere as part of the Oak Festival. Um, it's a fantastic film, or as my colleague says, it's fucking brilliant. Um, I'll start with a quite um, profound question. Um, towards the end of the film, Sylvana, it charts how you're beginning to kind of fatigue with the fame and success, and you get a bit tired and you say, I'm not a superhero. So, if you were a superhero, what superhero would you be? <laughs> um, hmm. Um, I haven't watched many superhero movies. <laughs> you can make well, one up if you want. Well, I mean, <laughs> I would be, um, can I choose a superpower instead? You can have a superpower, yes. I want to be invisible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can just walk around. And that kind of goes against the film. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll move on to something more specific then to do with the film. Um, when you introduced the film, you said, um, I think you suggested that Olivia had started sort of before you. So did that mean that you had to persuade Sylvana to take part? Was it an idea that you had rather than the other way around? Um, no, I, I think we just did a music video. I mean, we, I, it was for your like yeah, second first. or first song that you yeah. released as Silvana Imam because yeah. before you were Silvana Solo. Yeah, it's like another yeah <laughs> artist. <laughs> another name. No, 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 she didn't persuade me. I mean, she was just, yeah, let's film. And I said, yes. And was it complete access? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I have to, I mean, you, we didn't know what we started. And yeah. I think that's the main reason. Yeah, because exactly. we're like, oh, you are onto something. Mm -hmm. And you are taking a place that I, I find that's been missing in media and in, in film in general. So uh, we, as the directors, we were really like uh, eager to portray you because we thought that you stood for something uh, that we hadn't seen when we grew up <laughs> uh, uh, and we uh, just wanted to fill that gap somehow and we before we met Silvana we were talking Mika and Christina and me were talking about why don't we like write a fiction uh, film about uh, this <laughs> character because we we missed like a more diverse way of portraying women in film, mm -hmm. um, and then you just showed up. Oh, you! I didn't know yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> she was looking for you, yeah. and she found yeah. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, but the first time I saw you was in. Um, no, the first time I saw you was this beautiful music video that you made, Sarta Madam. Yeah. And then we met in this line for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. I love this video yeah. and then I saw you at this uh, manifestation against the how was that it was like a, yes oh, yeah um, the protest yeah protest as we see also in the film and you wear this jacket that said like I'm against the, the f like, well, uh, how do you like a, a certain part party in Sweden that oh. is a racist party yeah yeah and after that we did the music video and then we just realized that Silvana stands for something and a type of energy that we felt were just missing. And now I'm just repeating myself. But yeah, that's how it started. <laughs> and we started filming and uh, we thought that we would sh like put up five minutes clips to put up on YouTube before the election because 2014 was the election year in Sweden. So it's like exactly four years ago. So can we talk about that now? Because I know that you, you Savannah, I think you say that you're not political, but you're conscious. But yet, four years on, we've just had another election, and one of the what well, the Sweden Democrats have had more have gained more uh, percentage of the vote. So where does that make you stand now? Well, I mean, the thing is, uh, me saying I'm not political is just uh, I say that because. Uh, when people put labels on me, I like. Uh, if you want me to be something, I'm like I get, uh, like, very anti mm -hmm. what you say. I don't like people, especially men. They put like labels, or you're this and that, and that, and I'll be like, no, I'm not. Just to fuck with people's minds, because I'm, <laughs> I'm an artist. I do whatever I want. But yeah, I am super political. You know, it's very of course, and it's not about politics. It's about life. You mm -hmm. know, it's. Uh, 
because I didn't choose to be political. I mean, for me, it's inevitable, like, for because of who I am and, you know, because I have sympathy and compassion for people who are not like, you know, or maybe white passing like me and, you know. Mm -hmm. So one of the things, obviously, with any film, you can only tell one story. There's lots of other things that you could have included. And there's a large part of your life that isn't in the film. So I think it, there's a lot for when you're seven, um, with the haircut, and then it leaps forward to your success. What was happening in those years between, the sort of 20 years where um, the film doesn't present that? What was happening with me? Yeah. Well. <laughs> I don't know where to begin. <laughs> I was just living well, you... my life. <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, uh, I was studying psychology, so I have a master's degree in psychology. Um, I was studying, living in uh, New York also as well, and you know, I was just, I don't know where to begin. I, I, I mean, I've lived uh, a lot of years on this planet. <laughs> Okay, so but you have to be more specific because it's like twenty years. I don't know where. Well, to there's be. reference to where you were, um, where you moved to when you were four, which is Kiruna, is yeah. that right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people in the audience might not know where Kiruna is and what it's like, and it seems quite a, a long way from where you are now. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, uh, yeah. Well, I was born in Lithuania, and then uh, I, my father is from Syria, and my mother is from yeah Lithuania. Then we moved to Prague and then to Kiruna, which is like super north uh, of uh, yeah Stockholm. And uh, then we moved to Stockholm because my mom, uh, yeah, she got a job there. And um, yeah, and I started playing basketball. And uh, my father and mother are very political. And then I started writing poems. Um, and after that, um, yeah, I mean, I went to school for 12 years, it's yeah, not much exciting happening there. <laughs> so you, or no, more than 12 years because I studied in university, so like 18 years of my life I've been studying, yeah. And it seems like you've, you've had a meeting of minds in terms of role models, and I know that a lot of the work that you've done um, has been with quite a strong women, let's say. Um, in terms of who the audience for this film, you know, it's about a woman, made by women, so directed by women, produced and edited, I think, by women as well. Is your audience women, or how do you get beyond that? Mm. Uh, no, I think the film is for everyone to whom it may concern, <laughs> like uh, everyone that feel that they can relate to something and uh, I mean of course there's a lot of women who like the film and feel empowered and feel that they can reflect themselves in Tijuana <laughs> and Beatrice and also the film in general uh, but we also have a lot of like parents confronting us after a film like thank you for making me understand my child or th th those sorts of reflections so um, and I mean we didn't do this film with a specific purpose in that sense that we're gonna make a, um, a, a women's film or uh, you know in we we did this because we we the three directors we knew each other from film school and um, at, or we went to some sort of pre-film school uh, and uh, we wanted to as I said in the beginning we wanted to like fill a gap that we felt were missing and we met Silvana and we made it together and I think we also felt that it was really important to make a connection with you uh, in the sense that we were like filming and taking the sound and directing and also in some sense doing the uh, editing ourselves in the beginning just to connect to you, get to know you, because we didn't know you so much. And I mean, literally, Beatrice walked in front of the camera, and that was another part of the story, and we felt that, wow, we haven't seen this in, in, in film, in documentary films. We've seen it being portrayed in fiction, but we haven't seen it in this sense. So, I mean, if it's a, a, a film made for, 
a woman? It, it could be, but I think it's relatable in many senses. I can I feel that, I, for instance, many fathers can reflect upon how they uh, treat their like daughters or whatever. So I think that it has a lot of levels. And we didn't want to make a, like a stereotypical music uh, documentary in that sense that we follow you making the beats with the producer. We wanted to uh, get to know you and. And I think that's why we came pretty close, because there was just the three of us. Like mm -hmm. We normally maybe hire a sound technician or a camera person, but since we were just the three of us, at least all, like most of the times, it was like a really good tool to connect. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got a mic in the um, audience, if anyone has any questions. One at the front. Yeah. Oh. Oh, hi, hi guys. Um, thank you so much for this. Uh, it's amazing. And I, I just, um, wanted to say a big thank you to Silvana Imam. Um, my cousin sent your uh, song um, Imam to me 2014 when I was in Berlin. We were walking along the canal. We were listening to your music. Uh, it's so amazing. And you have inspired me in so many ways since then. Um, so... Um, <clears throat> And I was born in Jokosberg uh, also. Oh shit, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah 1976. Wow. Um, so, um, so, uh, so, yeah, it's, cool. it's just it's been so amazing. Uh, and I'm volunteering in a mental health recovery center. Oh, wow. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna play uh, your music uh, on Thursday <laughs> on my speaker, and we're gonna dance yes. to your music the whole yes. day. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, thank you. I, I didn't have a question, but I, I, I'm full of admiration of you and your music and your lyrics. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Any other questions? We've got a couple of minutes. Yeah, there's one just there. Oh, just in front of you. <laughs> when I've seen you perform, I've always been struck by how you interact with your young fans and I imagine that brings a lot of emotions of kind of the empowerment and the enthusiasm to then go forward for all of the love they have for you but also then I imagine a lot of delicacy and care around young people who see so much in you and that must be a really difficult line to walk so I just wanted to feel how you balance those powerful emotions that come with being an inspiration to young people uh, while also caring very much about them? Well, uh, I think it's also uh, very important for them to see that, you know, that uh, nobody is perfect. And so I don't try to be perfect anymore. I tried before to be perfect. Uh, but um, so I think, you know, I, I, I try not to think about like, okay, now I'm a role model to these people because I will <laughs> just really make me not feel good um i just think about like what you just said you know that made me like really happy and warm and like uh, well it meant something it mean it really means something when people say these things so i just try to keep it and then no more than that like it's i just yeah <laughs> any more questions in that case, um, I find. Oh, sorry, is there one there? Um, how do you feel like the music scene has changed since you um, became uh, well known? I guess, given that with, as it put, like the spotlight for mainly girls um, in Sweden. Actually, yeah, I think it has. Well, if I was in Sweden, I wouldn't like uh, say that because maybe people would be mad at me for like, no, it wasn't you. It's, like, it's always been like this. But I actually feel that I uh, made a, like, a difference there in the music scene. And also, I mean, I'm gay. I'm, you know, all these questions and everything I'm taking, like I'm answering them now. So the, you know, next generation won't have to answer these questions so i think that is change like okay let's you know ask all these questions that you have like how is this how is this happening and blah, blah blah and then you know then we're over it because i'm you know the next generation they're like well this is so everything is so natural everything is just everything <laughs> is natural so 
<laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> The front. <laughs> uh, hi. Um, hi. I've been here 10 years. I'm from Stockholm. So I, and I haven't really heard any music from you. I'm not very good with the Swedish music scene. But I'm a new fan, 100%. <laughs> and I want to know when you're coming to perform in London. Well, book me. Then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we will, we will. Well, I'm releasing my album in February, so yeah. um, next, I'm going on tour. Yeah, yeah. Yay. But, um, I don't know if we have a date yet, but okay, we'll, we'll make it happen. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Thank you. Yeah, Charlotte is actually running the biggest Swedish community in, really? yeah, in London with 50,000 members. So wow. she's definitely wow. booking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, well, let's, let's make it happen. Let's Charlotte. do it. Yeah. Um, I was just going to ask you two questions. First and foremost, it was a beautiful film, like in every sense of the world. So, yeah, that was just amazingly shot and amazingly directed. Um, but one, two questions I thought of was very interesting. One of them was when you talked about the journalists asking you in regards to why do women not rap or why do they rap? And they ask you questions for making you as, um, as someone that should be able to speak for a community or for a certain type of people. And even though that you're bothered with those questions, can you sometimes feel that it's your responsibility to enlighten people? Oh yeah, all the time. I mean, <laughs> this is why I'm put on earth. This is the, <laughs> seriously, because, I, well before, I mean, in, I'm 32, I began my rap career, music career, when I was 26. So before that I wanted to be a teacher, and I studied psychology and got a degree there, just so, you know, my goal was to, like, uh, make people conscious of their own, like, mind and how powerful it is. And, you know, so I went that whole route. And then I started making music. And it's kind of, well, when I write music, it's kind of the same thing. But, but yeah, and, but the, in, in, in a different aspect, of course. <laughs> but, uh, yes, I mean... I know, like I, I get, I get uncomfortable and I joke around a lot and everything. But you know, um, like this is really, really, really serious to me. This is really not a joke. Like to this day, um, I take it very serious. But like some, I like to troll around, especially with men, because it's, um, because I sometimes I feel that um, people want to ask these questions because they want a reaction and it's so yeah so sometimes i you know just say things that it, you know because i'm not gonna give a reaction to some to certain people that ask for it but um but like i really really feel a responsibility and uh, yeah i really do <laughs> I completely get that. And then I have to ask you one other question. When Beatrice came on the show, did you ever feel that if I had this, um, you know, in a relationship, you can always be like, oh, in 10 years, perhaps we're not together, and mm. she was in my documentary. <laughs> <laughs> Could you ever feel like that? Well, I mean, I didn't know that that we were going to sit. Oh, my God, what happened to the microphone? <laughs> like, really... It's like it happened. That's the way I it. Wait, didn't you? It's like, a, okay, whatever. Um, no, I was saying, uh, I mean, yeah, just like Olivia said, we thought it was going to be like a 15 minute, you know, whatever. So, but now I would never bring a camera to my bedroom like I did. I mean, it's just. Um, I, yeah, it's weird, <laughs> but um, I mean, yeah, I thought about that, but I was so, like, we were newly in love. I stayed longer and we're together. <laughs> and we talk about Beatrice a lot about that as well, because yeah. it was kind of complicated that she's, uh, uh, like, a side character, and you're the main character, and we've seen that in so many films before, like, a supporting girlfriend supporting the the main character like and we didn't want to do that and so we had a lot of discussion all of us like how should we not 
do that mistake again, reproduce that pitch that we've already been seeing so many times. And it's really important to not do it in this kind of movie with us as filmmakers. Uh, but it was also a hard balance because if we would give more space to Beatrice, because Beatrice really con needs her own documentary because she's so interesting and so powerful in every way, that would make the film about Savannah and Beatrice. And that was not the purpose and that's not how we started. So it was a fine balance, but uh, it was like puzzled out through conversation with Beatrice and mm. with you. So. But also a funny thing with that camera, you came back from this trip and like, no, we haven't been filming anything. And we're like, okay, we don't think of it because you had to convert the material with this like old camera. So we converted like half a year after and we're like, this is like the best material we've ever seen. <laughs> and you were like, no, we didn't do anything. We were just walking, talking, nothing. So it was really special. But that was just, we wanted to... Give yeah, I guess you, you have that material. Yeah. You have yeah, to yeah, give yeah, it to me. Yeah. 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 I also have Thank it. You. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we wanted to give you the chance to portray what you would like to portray because mm -hmm. normally we were the one in charge, like deciding the angle, deciding what to film. Mm -hmm. So we just wanted to give it the chance to you. We didn't say anything like film this or that. You no, just no, no, no. did what yeah. you wanted. Sort of, Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Any more questions from the audience? Okay. Did you know about Savannah before you came here? No. Yeah. No. no, no. Yeah. It's always interesting to know. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, Savannah, we know that you're working or about to complete an album and then going on tour in February. What about you, Olivia? What are you working on at the moment? Uh, I'm I'm writing on a, a new thing that I don't know exactly what it is yet because it's just like in the really seed level. Um, but it's like a the 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 base is based on documentary uh, a documentary story, but uh, we lack a lot of specific scenes, so we have to do it in in fiction, like playing it. So it's gonna be like a hybrid, some sort of thing. And when can we expect to see you? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe under too much pressure. But we will be going to Savannah's gig in February when she tours in London. Yeah. 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 Or in yeah. London. <laughs> um, A lot of shows. Oh, well, you can have more than one if we yes, can get the 50,000 on your mailing list. Yeah. <laughs> um, A huge thank you again for showing thank the you. film as part of Up and Roll. Thank you for having us. It was so fun to be here. What great guests. Can I have another round of applause?